I um I I do I miss my brother that used to sit right here in the front row, sit and play on the box. I get to see all the faces. Remember, I see all the faces. That's one good thing when I sit up here and play. And um, but we do. We miss our uh, our family when uh, when they go to be with the Lord. But there's that hope, and uh, and we uh, you know it's nice. We've already made reservations, so we uh, <laughs> we know where we're going. And, uh, you know what I mean? And uh, it's but it um, it it. it it's, it makes it easy. It really does, you know. Well, we know where we go and we're, you know. And ask people that are not Christians, it, there's darkness. Where are you going? I'm like, well, you kind of skip and hum all around. You just don't know. And it's, it's a loneliness. But uh, we have hope Amen. in Christ. So um, let's pray real quick. Father God, I, do, I, I, I thank you for this time. And Lord, you would open up this word and give it out. Not on Jim's terms, but on your terms. Father, and touch us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, it's nice seeing everybody here. The weather's finally getting halfway decent, isn't it? Amen. This is why people come to Tucson. Yeah. You ever notice the population of Tucson goes down in the, you know, when it's like between 180 degrees and 300 degrees? <laughs> and that range there, you know, where, you know, it's like you really don't know if you should go outside that time. You know what I mean? And he might not make it back. And, uh, but it's getting nice out, so, uh, and it's nice. Yesterday we had the, um, we had a men's conference. For you men that weren't here, try to give it a crack next year because we always have a really good time. Yes, it's very yeah. powerful. Um, I want to thank the guys for coming in and playing. Um, they're, uh, they're awesome. They really are. Um, you guys are, I, I've known these guys for a long time, and it's just, um, I mean, it's its simple as it comes. You just play with your heart, and uh, and we enjoy it. So thanks for coming, and we'll close with the song, too. Um, we had a good time yesterday. Um, men of courage. How to be courageous. We don't know how to do that. But when we walk with the Lord... And we face these giants in our lives. We learn how to how to take these things on, and um, and we learned yesterday as simple as David when he stood there and he listened to Goliath spewing this stuff out of his mouth, blaspheming the Lord. And this young man, it's 16, 17 years old, and he's like, "I'll take this guy." On. There was no hesitation whatsoever, and he does it. He did it with, he reached down, just like John was saying, he reached down, he grabbed those stones, and he threw them in his pouch. And he had his eyes fixed on Christ. He's looking th right through all this stuff. He knows what's going on. He says, I'm going to take this guy out. Yes, sir. And he took out this evil, and he, man, it was a first-round knockout. And he took this guy down just like that. And he did it in the power of the Lord. <coughs> and, you know, today I wanted to um, um, listen up. And God bless, brother. And um, it's about, um, I want to go into Revelation, <laughs> chapter 1. Amen. It starts, it's, it's a powerful book. This book was written by um, John, who was sitting in Patmos, the island. And, um, and he, um, th at this point, he was the last living disciple. The guy was like in his 90s, okay? He was, the, uh, he was a leader in the church, leader in the Bible here all this um, and he um, he's sitting on this island and they got they put him on this island because they got to get rid of this guy okay that's the way the Romans were, were like what are we gonna do with these people man you know what I mean and John was a biggie like what are we gonna do with this guy so they got we're gonna get him out of here we're gonna throw him on this island it's a 10 by 5 island it's about 50 60 70 miles off the uh, coast of Ephesus and um, and it's out there in the Aegean Sea and so you know we're gonna stick him out of here We'll shut them up. But it wasn't just an island. You know, they didn't, and it's not like sandals, you know, when you watch TV, you know, where people are out there, they got the jet skis going, you know, and, and they got the guy bringing out the food, walking on the water. It's not that. This guy's in prison. They, you know what? And they're like, we beat him back home, and we'll beat him out here. They're going to starve him, beat him, they'll do whatever it takes. They just want to get him out of their sight. So he's sitting out here, and um, and he is going to be filled by the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is going to reveal himself, and they're going to write the book of Revelation, and it's amazing. The book of Revelation, it's amazing. 
it's the 66 books. There's 66 books in the Bible, okay? You got to know the 65 before it to get to know the 66. You know, it's kind of like kind of like math. You know, how come they have algebra, then you got geometry, then you got algebra one, then you got algebra two, then you got trig, and then you got calc, you know, and all that? That's because you got to start here to get here. Okay? And so all this is coming into play, and it starts with a blessing for all those who hear the word and read the word and put it into play. Okay, we'll be blessed. And we're going to read that. And then it ends with a curse. For those that remove and take away, you will not reap what the Lord has in store. And, you know, these destructions will come upon you. <laughs> when someone comes to you with other religions, it gets interesting when all you got to do is say, here, let me share something with you here real quick. Flip to the very last paragraph of the book of Revelation. And they don't want to see that. They don't want to see that because those are like uh, well you know and it says right in there don't add anything anything to this book and so that's that's kind of like um, you know where we're at here um, in the book of Revelation I wrote these notes down I say this every time I jack them up and I'm finally just going to rip. Um, I'll throw my notes, you know. I'm like, I know other guys do that too. I'm like, why do I even write these notes? You know, I think God just kind of imprints them in my heart, and then uh, I just start taking off. The Book of Revelation is not plural; it's one word, Revelation. It's not a bunch of short stories, and it's not a bunch of wow. Too many times, people will go into the Book of Revelation, and they're like, they want to, they're like, wow, this is this is so cool, you know, this is like. This, this is, this, there's so much neat stuff in there. Well, it's the truth of what is to come. John walked with Jesus, and he saw the humble servant, okay, that had a towel. Remember when he served the disciples? He put a, he put a towel up. He girded up, you know, he says, I'm going to clean their feet, okay? That's the Jesus that he knew. But the Jesus that came to play here in the book of Revelation that was revealed to him is a different one. Mm -hmm. It's the king. Mm -hmm. It's the one who will come back. And he's showing just who is who here. You know, God, J John was taken up into heaven and then he was thrust forward into the future to say what was going to happen. Because they always had these questions. It's a... Um, it's a messianic book, and it reveals Jesus on who he really is. He is the one that you go to at night and you talk to, and he is the one who has total compassion on you. He's the one that will touch your heart. He's the one that will talk to you, and he's also the one that we know that we will have to answer to one day. He is the one probably that you're going to stand there. We talked about this yesterday a little bit. When you get to heaven, absent the body is in the presence of the Lord. Once you die, boom, those eyes are coming open. And guess what? You are right there in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. Now, I can only imagine what's going to happen. I saw a beautiful cartoon the other day, and it showed that second that you're face to face with Jesus. It showed this woman. She had her arms wrapped around Christ and just crying and hugging. And it's, it, it, there was no words. The second that you're face to face with Jesus, you're like, wow, it's possible. It's, it's, it's probably, you know, but that's who he is. He was all man, and yet he is all God. It's the unveiling, it's the revealing, it's an apocalyptic book. And in Greek, they got that word from tekos, okay? And where do we get our words? Tachometer. It's a re revelation. It's a revealing. It's a continual thing that's happening all the time. Um, and it, um, it's, it, it's an amazing book. In the Old Testament, you have 19 books that prophesy. In the New Testament, you have one. And that's the book of Revelation. You do have snippets, like in Philippians, one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. 
which many people have a hard time with that. Like, I ain't bowing down to nobody. You know, I got a job, and I'm doing really good, and I don't need some dude telling me what to do. But you know what? He started as a humble servant, and he will... He will continue it on until one day that we are face to face with him. In the book of Revelation, there are events that will happen. And I wanted to hit this today. It's the number one book that people are thinking, wow, I want to use the book of Revelation. Number one. People are like, you know, people are like, the number one book that guys don't want to teach. No, no, so there's a lot of guts in here. First of all, if you're going to throw it out there, you better have a relationship with the true and living God Christ to be able to effectively teach this. Okay? You need to. One day there will be a rapture. It tells us when you go into second, when you go into uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, that we'll be caught up in the sky. Okay? First Corinthians fifteen, yeah, fifty, fifty, so right there. For I tell you a mystery: not all of us will have to die. In, Re in Revelation 3, it says that those that are, will not have to go through the sufferings that will come upon the earth that no man has seen before. This is a clarity. There will be a rapture. The rapture is the trigger. Once the rapture happens, you will have seven years of tribulation. Okay? That's when all heck is going to break loose. And that's when God will remove his children his church, his true children. And then the tribulation will start. Now, it will be quite interesting the day after the rapture, how it's going to be in churches. It's going to be really wild for some pastors to have to ask that and answer that question of what just happened. Amazing, isn't it? You ever seen these movies that they throw out there? You know, like Left Behind and all that? It kind of makes you wonder, you're like, hmm, that's going to be pretty interesting, you know? You know, you know. my wife and I were talking yesterday, it's like, well, what is, what are they going to put down on death certificates? <laughs> is State Farm going to pay out on this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> interesting question. The world, you know, that they turn their back on. The tribulation period. 2 Thessalonians talks about a man of lawlessness will come in and this delusion will come upon the people, okay? Daniel 7 talks about the 77s, okay? It talks about that one final one, that one last seven right there. That is the tribulation period, okay? And then after the tribulation, you have the battle of Armageddon. And then after that, you have the thousand year reign, which is called the millennium. All those that live through the tribulation period that will come to Christ will be on the be on this planet right here, okay? And then it will reign. Christ will reign, okay? But the problem is, is okay, you're thinking, okay, you got a thousand years and you got the people and all that, but uh, but you got kids. These people are gonna have kids. Things are gonna go south again, kind of. You're gonna start getting some crazy offsprings, and you're gonna have people, and that's why. Satan will be restrained during that time, and at the end, he'll be let loose, and guess what? There will be a battle again. I'm like, this is crazy. Is this ever going to end? God never ends coming after people. He's always giving people chances. That's the beautiful thing about it. This is why I look around, and I see guys and gals, you know, and people that knew me from the past, you know, thinking, <laughs> obviously, you have a very forgiving God. You know I mean? Very forgiving. And I just say that on me. For yous, you have your story too, okay? So, um, but, and then after that, there will be the great white throne judgment. And then eternity. Remember, John was with Jesus. Like he says, I was with who is, who was, and who is to come. So he's writing, he walked with Christ, who is, the was, remember 1 John? In the beginning was the Word, right, the Word was God, the Word, okay, was with, and the Word was God, okay? He's writing about who he was before eternity, and then, here's Revelation, who is to come. 
God is going to give that clout. He's going to give the vision. And he's going to open up that heart to whoever he wants. You will see some really rough characters sometimes on the outside that have had their hearts changed and have had their hearts softened. The guy's like, now we can work on this thing. Now I'm going to use you as a vessel. Now, just like he did with David. David was portrayed as a man of heart, a man of God's heart in the Bible. Goliath, he was just a big dude and a big mouth. David went in there and scooped those stones up. He took the first one. He took out Goliath. That's the one we know the most of. The other four were his brothers that his other generals went and got later on. True leadership is going to show these guys, this is how it's done. And what did he do? He charged. He charged Goliath. He went <laughs> at him. He did not duck. He did not. He took the opportunity. So you know what? I stand for the Lord. In my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's read this. i got 15 minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good intro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testifies to everything that he saw. That is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. All right, this is all about one thing, Jesus. And he gave it to his servant. It started with God, gave it to his son, Christ, gave it to an angel through the Holy Spirit, and revealed it to John. And then here we are. Isn't that cool? That's how the system goes. Okay? That, that's the gig. And um, so he, um, he's, what he's doing, he's writing this down for others to benefit from exactly. Has God ever touched your life? Well, he's put someone on your heart. So you know what? And he, you, know, you don't hear this audible, you know. I mean, you could. I mean, but I, I've never heard. But you sure feel it in your heart. And then, strangely, miraculously, in our eyes, all of a sudden that person that you had on your heart comes across your path. Or you seek them out, you know? And God's like, you know what? Obviously, I want you to share something with this person that I have something to say to you. Many times, that person is so distraught. Maybe a family member, people have lost loved ones and things and all. You have these words to share with them. This is what John's doing right now. And it's going to affect everyone who believes. Just like the spies that went into uh, the Holy Land. Yeah, remember? Yeah. Well, John effectively and these spies, out of 12, 10 of them, man, they, they didn't do so hot, did they? They come back, they're like, this is bad, guys. This is really bad, man. Dudes are big. Fruit's big. Food's big. You know, everything's big. Trucks are big. Every, you name it, man. How, everything's gigantic. There's no way we can take these guys out. Two guys, Jacob. And, I mean, uh, Joshua and Caleb, isn't it cool? <laughs> Caleb over here. They're like, let's go get them. The 10, like, nah. These 10 dudes decided the fate of the whole nation of Israel. Isn't that amazing? 10 dudes. 10 guys. Wow. Because of them. We follow Christ. These other ones walk in fear. Not to walk in fear. You're going to face these giants in your life. That's all there is to it. But we follow Christ. And this is the testimony in three. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take heart to it for what is written in it, because the time is near. Folks, if there's one thing that you and I, we all need, is to be blessed. For the, when we hear the word and we read the word and we put it into effect in our lives. Here's a man who's sitting in prison. How was it that when you got up this morning, you got out of bed, right? Okay. This guy was probably sleeping in the dirt. And he's considered one of the giants right here. One of the, one of the, John? He was with Jesus. Remember that mountain of transfiguration? He was with him right there. 
him, James, and John, okay? I mean, Peter. Right there, God reveals himself on who he is. He gave him a little snippet of what was to come. And John needed the encouragement. And um, just like just like we do. You ever get down? You ever get discouraged? You ever feel defeated? It's amazing. All I gotta do is give a little bit of time, don't you? Give it a week, two, something's gonna happen. You're gonna hear things, you're like, man, jobs, money, marriages, you go on and on. All I gotta do is walk down the street nowadays, you know what I mean? You can see some just, just nuts, you know? And uh, but he needed the encouragement, and what did he do? John sought out the Lord constantly, and the Lord blessed him, and he's blessing us right now. And John, in four, to the seven churches in the province of Asia. See, this, this is where the book goes. He's writing to all these churches, these seven churches, and these are actual churches that they founded. You follow it on a map, boom, that was when Paul, when they all founded these churches, um, it, it, you can follow this map, and these were real churches. They were in Turkey, and the first one was Ephesus right there. But he said to the seven, the seven, the word seven, I wrote some of these things down here. It's completion, Sabbath, circumcision, Jericho. Remember when they, when they marched around Jericho? Remember? Seven times, you know what I mean? Of course, I'm sure the guys in Jericho were like, your generals are probably on the wall. They're like, come here, guys, you got to check this out. Look at these guys. Look at these fools. Check this out. What are they doing? You know, after about the third, fourth, fifth day, like, this is crazy. Go get some popcorn. Yeah, we're going to watch this, you know. They found out what happened on the seventh. Oh. Okay. Remember when Naaman, when he had to be dipped in the Jordan, you know what I mean? To be cleansed, you know, and uh, seven times. Joseph, seven years of famine. Nebuchadnezzar, remember? Remember he went into, he lost his mind. He's out there eating eating grass and all that, you know, for seven days. I mean, seven years, okay? And uh, you have seven Beatitudes. Jesus had seven statements on the cross. Hmm. If you ever want to read something really good, read that one. Hmm. Yeah. And while he's saying those seven statements, you got this dude over here watching it the whole time. The whole time. This guy was a killer. This guy was a killer. This guy's watching, and this guy's just like, this is it's crazy. And he's like, you know what? He picked up on this fast, this thief, real fast. Grace and peace to you from who is, who was, and who is to come. Just like we were saying earlier. And from the, from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is the only one. And this is why we are sitting here. Because none of us are following some dude. We have a Lord that was crucified. He took our sins right to the cross, threw him up there, and he died for our sins. And then he was resurrected. Try that one, other gods. Try that one. Dudes ain't going to do that. We're sitting here and it ain't going to happen. We need Jesus who led and, um, and it's his glory. Amen. And the ruler of the kings of the earth. And that's what he's, he did all that for us. It's like John was saying. He did for me. After we pull some stunts that we pull. Yeah. I do that daily on the road when I'm driving, you know. You know, you've heard Robert teach about that, you know, like you're killing people left and right on the road. Man, you know, it's crazy. You know, people are on their phone, you know. I know my wife gets on me too, you know. Put the phone down. I'm like, I'm just, I'm not, you know, you try to put yourself in that neutral zone where you're not texting and you're not doing anything. To, you're just kind of like gazing at the stone. And at the phone, you, know? you know, it's like, it kind of, like, I'm, I'm off the hook, kind of, you know, but, but we do that. We do these, it's like in, in, our hearts can just be so consumed by some of the stuff that's going on around there. So, um, but we, um, that he would do this for us. 
Just like in 7, look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the people of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be, amen. This will happen. He will come back. And the earth will not like what they see. Satan don't like that little piece of scripture right there. He don't like that. Because you know what? His doom is coming. It is written. He knows. And yet, too many of us, we buy into this stuff that we pull. You know what I mean? Satan's so like, hey, good job. <laughs> That's right. Good man. Good man. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Philippians 2 is a perfect one right there. I, John, no, I, I am the Alpha and the Omega in 8, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come. He is the Almighty. That's the very first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Alpha and the Omega. He's everything. And in our lives, what more do we need? You know, it's amazing, as we get older, we start realizing that, you know, I, I, this, this can be kind of simple. We start really, we start shedding things off in our lives that just keep clinging on to us, you know what I mean? Kind of like that, that Star Trek type thing, these Klingons, I've heard that, you know, <laughs> message on that, like, these Klingons that we have. And we learn in time, you know, this just doesn't work. Or it can be a, a total distraction. It's like Jesus told the disciples, drop your nets. Don't go dragging these babies around the beach. You're going to look stupid. It's like somebody you ever see, you know, someone on the beach has got like eight, nine kids, you know, and you got all this stuff, and you got bags, and you got things, and you're dragging it, and you're like, man, boy, I'll tell you what, I think I'd be traveling light. And just tell the kids to jump in the water. <laughs> and have fun. We don't need all this stuff. We get all this stuff going on, you know what I mean? We start dragging things around. And, you know, when you start dragging stuff, it's like you get you, you leave, drag marks are everywhere, and there's complaining, you're spilling stuff and things and all that. We don't need that. <coughs> let it go. We let these things go. So who is he? He is the Lord Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega. I, John, in nine, your brother and companion... Um, I, John, your brother and companion, in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that, that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Why was he on the island? <laughs> because he was proclaiming the word of God. Okay? Will there be sufferings? Brothers and sisters, there will come suffering. We have not witnessed anything yet. We see things on TV, but there will come that day. The government will oppress you because of what you're saying about Christ? This dude was in prison on an island. That can happen? The way that the first century church was ushered in, which was through... Nero, he cooked the joint. You know what I mean? We're, we're, I'm getting tired of these Christians. We're going to burn this joint down. And he got them out there. He says, move. And they moved. I'm sure the way that the first century church was ushered in is probably the way the last century church is going to be ushered out. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Those around us that aren't believers, usually you got to see how people act under pressure. And then when things are gone called the rapture. They're going to need something to kind of imprint in their minds. In their minds. You know what I mean? So, the suffering and the kingdom and the patient endurance endure these painful things that we're going to go through. On 10, on the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which was which said, write on a scroll what you see and send to the seven churches. And he did. To Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, uh, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Okay? On the Lord's Day. Okay? That's the big day. Not the day of the Lord. On the Lord's Day. Because when he comes back, that's his day. And it will be seen. Okay? So, he did. He wrote these letters. 
and I'm not going to go into these churches. These churches probably represent a really good analogy of all the different hearts. Our hearts. Like, like Ephesus, verse 1. They said, you guys, you did good. You, you, you're standing firm. You guys are busy doing this, and you're busy doing that, and, and, and you're like the Bereans, you know what I mean? You're, you're making sure that all the scriptures are right, but, but you're losing your first love. That's just the first church. Some churches were persecuted. Some, they had all the money in the world, and yet they, they're, they're, they're about as far from Christ as you can imagine. You know what I mean? Not that money is going to do it, but what I'm saying is the whole, the, the, way, the, the way these cities were built. But, so he wrote these churches, and in 12, and he, he could hear, and that's what God's voice is. It's like, um, um, it's, it, it, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet. And with a golden sash around his chest, his head and hair were like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like the blazing fire. His feet were like the bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all of its brilliance. That, right there, is a beautiful description of a glorious king. His clothing, remember Isaiah wrote, his robe fills the temple like a train. Um, versus a towel on him the way that he used to be. Remember, this is about revealing who Jesus and what he will be. His hair represents the eternity. His eyes, remember these are the same eyes that John saw one time compassionate eyes that he spent face to face with and yet he's glowing like fire now he's like wow this is our God this is our true king his feet which always represents the judgment the power versus remember those old dusty sandals yeah well, how he came first you know, he gave the world. He grew up like a wild shoot, you know what, amongst them, and they didn't know him. His own people. His hands, the lordship. His face represents the radiance that he is. And he walked. The seven golden lampstands should be the church. The church should be the light in this world while Christ is gone. This is who we're supposed to be. And it represents here like the Son of Man walking amongst them. That was the job of the high priest. They would go into the temple, and what they would do is they would light the candles, okay? And they would keep the oil filled. And what they would do is they would trim the wick. That's exactly... What Christ does in our life. Every single one of our lives. He's the one that lights the light in our life. It's because of him. It comes in, you got the light. And what is he going to do? He's going to fill us up. With the Holy Spirit. And we, that's just like back then. That's the representation of us. He fills that with the oil. And then he trims us. You ever feel like you're getting, you know, getting trimmed? You know, I've always told the story, you know, like I... I our, our mesquite tree, you know, and uh, yeah, I've learned to, if you can reach it, you cut it. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and I had, you know, it, it's true. It's just, key, it gets big and it's beautiful. If God's gonna, he's gonna trim you. He's gonna trim you down. He's gonna take these things and he's gonna remove stuff in our lives. It just doesn't there. And it hurts when you kind of get, you know, take care of that way, but afterwards, it, um, it produces that harvest of righteousness of those that have been trained by it. You know what I mean? Hebrews 12. And then after that, sometimes things just aren't working out right. The old high priest would come along and he'd put that out. This just is not going right. And that's exactly what God can do too. He'll remove things. This is his gig. 
We're his children. And when he comes back, it's just like, you know, with all his glory, it's like a teacher when they leave the class. You know what I mean? Like when you're growing what's a good age? Junior high. Remember junior high age? If anything can happen, it will happen. Okay? Teacher leaves the class. And what happens? Class goes crazy. Right? I know. Yeah. I know what? Fights break out. You go nuts, throwing stuff and all that. And then the teacher comes back. And it's like, you know what? A little different now. That's exactly how it's going to be when Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. Things go crazy. I was here. I leave. I come on. And he's coming back to class. And he's going to set the tone. So, he lights us. He fills us up with the Holy Spirit. He's going to trim us down. He's going to take care of these things. And he's going to bless us. And how does he do it? Through that double-edged sword, remember? His word. That's what got John on this island. It wasn't because he was talking about, hey, you know, it was a really cool place to vacation, you know, and, uh, and this and all that. They're like, we got to get this guy out of here. No, it's because he's proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. This is exactly what's happening out there. You bring that word up, you're like, oh boy. People are like, oh man, here we go again. We gotta snuff this down. This is what's happening. <laughs> and when I saw him, I fell at his feet, though dead. And then he placed his right hand on me and says, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the first. And I am the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. So the next time you feel down, you're really kind of bummed, and you have questions, you know what? It's in his hands. If you need encouragement, you can go to your wife as much as you can. There's only so much you're going to get. You can go to your husband for as much as you need encouragement. There's only so much you're going to get because we're humans. And that's when you're like, you know what? I'm going to go straight to the head of the class. And I'm going to get some true encouragement I need. And not only will he encourage you, sometimes we make boo-boos. You ever make boo-boos? Yeah. Remember, I'm the guy. Book of James, Taming the Tongue, Chapter 3. Yeah. You can put a slash and you can put a gym right next to that James. Okay? And I, I need help. And he's a real reminder. But when you look at these disciples in the Bible, you look at Peter, you look at these guys, you're like, Man, there's hope. There's hope in my life because of what God did through these men. So through God's word is how he's going to touch our lives and he will continue. And he's the one, eternity or hell, there will be. Remember, Satan, People thinking, oh, Satan's down in hell just having fun. There ain't no hell yet. There ain't been no judgment. This is the walking hell. Remember, he's reigning over this planet right now. This is his gig. It judgment when he'll be thrown into the abyss. Okay, when he'll be thrown into the lake of fire. That's when it starts. Until then, we got to put up with this stuff. And Jesus says, we need to be the light out there. 19, write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw on my right hand of the, of the seven uh, lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay? So you've got the stars and the lampstands. Pastors, leaders in the church, it's so important. They have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Men that are truly, and women that are truly um, leading properly in Christ. Not some gimmick. Not because of a, of a you know, we got, we got some special thing here, you know, TV stuff and all that. Not that they don't have Christian things on TV, but you need to keep your eyes focused on Christ. That's what this is all about. The lampstands are the churches. That's why as you follow chapter 2 and 3, you go through all the churches. And you're like, wow, when you read these, you can figure this out. You're like, hmm, 
We got some problems there. So we got a lot of problems, don't we, Phil Phillips? We got a lot of problems. But we have a God that is not. He's the only problem he has is that everyone isn't accepting him. That's the only thing. And the miracles, like he told Jesus, told the, the disciples, and I'll close with this, is, is he said, and, he, and they just, he's getting ready to live, and he said, you know, I will send you a helper. I will send you a, a, um, a counselor, a teacher. And after I'm gone, you will do even greater miracles. And they're like, this guy fed hundreds of thousands of people. He healed. He did all this stuff. And we're going to do greater things than that? What could possibly be the greatest thing after Jesus leaves? He said, we're going to do it. It's ushering people right into eternity with Jesus Christ and literally saving them from the gates of hell. The Hades? Cut and dry. My brother sat right there and I could see his face when he would we'd do the worship and he would just he would enjoy it. He got fed and fed and fed. And you know what? God's word penetrates. It's a repetition. It's just, we just keep going. He saw the love of Christ. He knew Jesus. And he loved him. And he had his own way. We all have our own way. You know what I mean? But you know what? The bottom line is this. That we go straight into the gates of eternity with Jesus. And one day, we can only imagine what it's going to be like up in heaven. All right, Father, thank you for your word. It's amazing that we would stay away from the wows. And we would keep our eyes fixed on you. And that's what counts. And with that, today, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So we live for today with you. That you would empower all of us. Just continue doing what you're doing with us. We're a work in progress, Lord. Bless us, anoint us, and everything going on. Marriages, jobs, we've already said it all. Father, you know everything. You would just continue your way. And Lord, be with us now as we as we honor our brother and give him this time. He's with you. That's glorious. So thank you, Father, and thank you for my brothers and sisters. That's a miracle in itself that we're sitting right here with you. And it's because of what you've done. You've lived our lives. And you're going to keep feeding us and taking care of us. And you're going to trim us down, Lord. It's okay. We know who you are and why it's all well worth it, Father. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right.